sizzle. Oh, baby. He mad sizzle. Oh, yeah. Get him, baby. Ah. Key podcast, yeah, you know what it is when you hear that beat. This is episode seven of the Low Key Podcast and One Street Vol versus NBA. I want to get into the N One man. It was a very very popular time around that time, man. I honestly can't even go. I, I'm pretty sure it had to start around the late '90s, early 2000s, as far as Volume One, which I did not know nothing about. I really didn't get into them until like a little later on about Volume Three, which introduced Hot Sauce. And after that, I pretty much was on them, man. Volume 4, Volume 5, like, take off. And, of course, Street Ball, the series that was coming on ESPN, you know what I'm saying? I do want to get well into that and uh, talk about basically the popularity of Street Ball and how popular it became. If you grew up around that time when N1 was coming around, not just coming around, but when it got real, real popular, we can all agree N1 was very, very much more popular than the NBA. N1 was more popular than the NBA. You had a bunch of NBA players coming to jump, uh, play around with the players. Chris Brown was in a bunch of those old episodes of Street Ball early on. Shaq was there. Like, you had a lot of people coming out, man. And Street Ball N1 was definitely more talked about than NBA, 100%. So I want to get into some of those things, man. I ain't going to really get into, like, the history of N1. I think I'll say that for another episode, but... I really want to just talk about that popularity and how popular they became over the NBA. I'm talking about shoes. I'm talking about video games. I'm talking about everything, man. And if you don't believe me, you could you can look this stuff up, man. You can look up and see how popular this was. It's a documentary out about them, man. I don't know how popular it is, but I read a lot of old stuff about the N one thing, like what happened to them and what how it went away. They had a couple things going on. Like, it was a thing that was coming on, like, ESPN or, like, Ball Up. I ain't really watched that. I never watched that. But I did stay in tune with most of the street ball episodes. You know what I'm saying? Later on down the line, I kind of fell off of it. I kind of stopped watching it. You know what I'm saying? It definitely lost its interest. But early on, like, I'll say around Volume 4 going into Volume 5, it was at its peak popularity. Man. Then when in Volume 6, I think that's when they started doing, like, the street ball thing with ESPN. It was at full fledged popularity. After that first season of street ball, the N1 was definitely very, very much more important than the NBA. It was more important than the NBA. You was watching street ball N1 more than you was watching the NBA. I guarantee you that around that time, you was watching N1 instead of the NBA. I do want to talk about some of those players from N1. Because if you want to be honest with me, N1 was the Wu Tang of basketball. Like, you didn't know everybody, but you knew them. You knew most of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? N1 was definitely the Wu Tang of basketball. You know what I'm saying? You had Hot Sauce. You know what I'm saying? You had Main Event. You had Shane the Dribbling Machine. You had Silk. You had Sick Witted. You had Half Man, Half Amazing. You had Escalade. You had Black Widow, like my man used to call him. Man, uh, who else? I know I'm forgetting some people. You had the pharmacies, of course. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I hope I'm not Flash. Rest in peace, Flash. Uh, of course, I got to shout out the people that has passed man. one. Rest in peace, the Black Alamo, Black Widow. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Escalade. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. But yo, some of the main people, you know what I'm saying? I named a couple of them. I'm going to be naming a couple of them. The other people later on down the line, you know, like Professor Nim, you know, Helicopter Nim, they came on later on. I'm talking about the main people that was doing, like, the tapes before they even got to the TV show. And, you know, that was the hot sauces, main events. And, of course, can't forget the person that made it to the NBA, Skip to Malou. Can't forget about Skip to Malou. Like I said, though, I want to get into that popularity. I'm saying, and one came around a time where 
you had Michael Jordan pretty much leaving. You know what I'm saying? 1998, Michael Jordan was retired. That was his last year in the NBA. So that was going into 1999. Like I said, NBA, <coughs> excuse me, and one came around the late 90s, early 2000s. That was like probably the first tape. And that was kind of that peak era where you was not getting like that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Kobe and them. You know what I'm saying? Allen Iverson, who was definitely coming in 2000, 2001, because, you know, I was a Lakers fan, straight up Lakers fan. Kobe and Shaq. I loved all of that. You know what I'm saying? But, and one man, like, to be able to go out there, like, you felt like you could be in one. And you could be. You know what I'm saying? At one point in time, like, you could go get into a street ball thing they was doing, you know, when they was held in the competitions, whatnot. And then, like, Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina, by the way. I live in North Carolina. So the closest I was to in one was Charlotte and Raleigh. Those were the places they was coming to when they was doing a competition for the TV show. You know what I'm saying? And one had, of course, the moves. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty much anything goes besides, you know, not super fouling nobody, you know, trying to hurt nobody, nothing. But as far as walking with the ball, you know what I'm saying, uh, doing extra moves as far as holding the ball longer, you can, longer than you're supposed to as far as taking more than two steps, you know what I'm saying. I ain't got the whole basics and fundamentals of basketball down, but, you know, and one was a bunch of stuff you weren't supposed to do in the NBA. All those moves, you know, especially the moves hot sauce would do, you know what I'm saying, holding the ball, carrying the ball, and all that is, you couldn't do that in the NBA, you know what I'm saying. But watching people fall, you know what I'm saying, you know watching the NBA, you ain't going to probably see, maybe maybe you're going to see somebody fall every five to six games. Maybe you're going to see somebody get dunked on every six to eight games. And one, you're going to see somebody fall every game. Somebody going to get their ankles broke. And one, Somebody going to get dunked on. Somebody going to be a poster every game. You know you're going to get something excited. You know you was going to see somebody get embarrassed. And that was the popularity for me about N1. N1 also came around the time where you was outside all the time, man. Like, late 90s, early 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 4. You know what I'm saying? People was outside. You was at the basketball court all the time. Everybody was at the basketball court. From that morning and Saturday morning, I say like 11, 12 o'clock, all the way to like 6 or 7 o'clock. You outside. You might slide through every now and then to get something to drink. Might get try to get some chips or something, but most likely you outside all day long. And everybody was at the basketball court. And and one was at that time where, man, you was at the basketball court. You was making up your own names. You was trying to make up your own moves. You weren't thinking that nobody was trying to say, like, NBA. People were talking about going to do N1. Nobody was talking about going to NBA. People were talking about going to N1. And don't get it twisted. You trying to go to college. You trying to get a scholarship. You trying to play in the NBA. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying people weren't trying to play in the NBA, but N1 was what everybody was talking about. I'm talking about the kids. I'm talking about the college kids. I'm talking about NBA players. Everybody was on N1. It got to the point where ESPN had to bring these guys on, man. Like, this, pop- this is popular. And it ran for a long time. And I mean a long time. And that popularity definitely came from what they could do on the court and the NBA couldn't do on the court. You know what I'm saying? And another thing that came with that you knew these guys' names, man, Hot Sauce, of course, to me, the most popular guy. Hot Sauce, to this day, Hot Sauce is the guy. I mean, some people would probably say Professor as far as that little popularity, as far as that. And that's the show. To me, honestly, it's Hot Sauce. And I would say probably second, I would say A.O., as far as popularity, AO. And if I didn't mention AO, my bad, man, because AO is definitely the one of those guys that you came to the games to see. You came to see him cross somebody else. You came to see him embarrass somebody. The same with Hot Sauce. And you definitely, I want to get a shout out to the baby Shaqs, man. Helicopters. Like, these guys came on later on. These guys weren't in the mixtapes early on. Like, you didn't see baby Shaq and probably Helicopter to, like, volume six. Like, Escalade and all these guys is volume five, you know what I'm saying? Volume four and three. And that's like main event, half man, half amazing, the hot sauces. And, like, the sick with his AOs and them, you know what I'm saying? That's them guys, you know what I'm saying? Black Widow, all these guys. Another thing that made N1 so damn popular was my man, Duke Tango. The dude, oh, baby, oh, baby. You hear that dude coming out, he hyped you up. 
you was hyped up to see somebody get dunked on, see somebody get crossed over, and he coming down there, oh, baby, look at him, my man, look at him, and he taunting people while they get crossed over, you know what I'm saying, like, that, that just hyped up the game even more, it wasn't like listening to the NBA, and you got these commentators like, yeah, you got Shaq coming down the pin, wow, there he goes, cross and a swing move and a fadeaway jumper, like, that's the commentary you was getting in the NBA, pretty much, you know what I'm saying, but and one, it was like you was outside looking at your homeboys cross over somebody and dunking y'all out there wilding out. That's what N one was to all these younger people, especially coming up in those early two thousands, man. It was all about N one. I'm trying to tell you. Like and you had a, a guy like Allen Iverson, who was probably at that time the only guy who was really manipulating those moves. And you had of course Stefan Marbury who was the guy who was representing the N1 tennis shoe at that time. You know what I'm saying? But to me, it was definitely Allen Iverson at that time who had the closest to those moves. You know what I'm saying? As far as being able to cross somebody up and embarrass somebody. So, to watch N1 evolve and grow into what it did grow into, man, it was crazy. But it just it's just bad to see how it faded away so quick. Because to me, it, it's as it's popular as it got. <coughs> is as fast to me as it declined. Like, it got it got popular real fast. You know what I'm saying? Like, real fast. And to me, it got declined even faster. Like, to me, it went down faster than it rose. Because all of us was remember watching them VHS tapes. N1 VHS. Oh, yes. You talking about going to the mall trying to find those old DVDs, the rap battle DVDs, fight clubs. And that's another episode. Trust me. I got, I got all this. I'm going to get into, you know what I'm saying? But as far as the N one, that was VHS tapes, man. You talking about like 25, 30 minute tapes, not long at all. Like these tapes went no more than it probably at the most 30 minutes at the highest, maybe 35 minutes, but that's what it was about. Looking this, looking at these dudes dunk on people. Watching these guys cross up people, and you knew all their names. You knew who was about to come down and do what. You knew who you was looking for to do what. It wasn't like watching somebody get put at the game, like watching Tracy McGrady in the game, first, second, and third, probably third half of the quarter, and then he goes sit down, and you watching these bench players, and you don't know who they is. When you watch N1, even players that wasn't on N1 at first, they grew on you. And that was like the pharmacists, the bad Santas, and it's – this is when the TV show started. You know what I'm saying? This is when you get into that. The first season, of course, is the best. You know what I'm saying? That's when you get Professor. That's when you get Helicopter. And excuse me if I'm going a little fast. Like I said, this is, I'm getting new to the, still new to the podcast game, man. And as far as I know, my 15 minutes is up. I got 45 minutes to talk about things. So, yeah, we got some time, you know what I'm saying, to get into some things. I did a little upgrade on my thing. So, yeah. But let me get back to what I was talking about as far as this M1 street ball versus NBA. And like I said, that popularity was watching guys that you knew that was coming out on that floor and you knew exactly what moves was with who. You knew main event was going to duck on somebody. You knew hot sauce was going to cross somebody up. You know what I'm saying? And seeing regular neighborhood guys get a chance to get put on, like you watch the professor come from being this little guy that was just running around doing moves becoming a household name you watch spider become a household name you watch guys like the helicopter become a household name like street ball was doing that for regular nine to five guys or like he said it was one episode where he was talking about like people getting out of jail felons you know what i'm saying like they might not be able to do something with college or go to the nba but they can come out here and play with us you know what i'm saying and that's what n1 street ball was to a lot of people man it, it was like being at home. It was like being at the court, like I said, with your homeboys, with your brothers, you know what I'm saying, just out there on the court with your people. I mean, I remember having those N1 games on uh, PlayStation 2, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't, I'm probably playing no live, man. I mean, don't get it twisted. We were still playing live. I ain't even going to say that. We was playing live. I'm lying. We was definitely still playing live. But we was definitely on that street ball, you know what I'm saying? But... Just watching them get to where they was at and to start doing a TV show and to start seeing the elevation of so many people and them being able to elevate their lives because they couldn't get to the NBA. 
but them getting a the chance to get some kind of notoriety, you know what I'm saying? And people love it. Man, I love to see that. That was the thing I really love to see. I love to see them guys.